By leveraging products with proven sales records and replicating successful formats, you drastically increase the likelihood that your TikTok product video might go viral. So you can sort through the top people making sales in your specific category. It tells you what products they're selling and what categories and all the data and stats that you might need. You can also specifically search a random influencer if you find somebody, again, like I said, reverse engineering wise. But the easiest way that the majority of you are gonna start is just doing the product search. This is the low hanging fruit, and this is how I use it 95% of the time, right? It's got all the data organized in a easy to read, easy to understand format right here in front of you, smacking you in the face, right? It's got all the different marketplaces again, all the different categories. It's got searchability. You can filter it through price, specific commission percentage. If you only wanna go after products with like 20% margins or 30% margins, it's got product ratings. If you only wanna sell you know, four star products or five star products. And you can also filter it between the specific day. So currently right now, one day, you can filter it within the last week and you can also filter it within the last month and update it accordingly, right? So the easiest way to get started again is just make sure that you have your marketplace selected. I'm in the United States, so that's what I'm gonna do. In the beginning, if you're unsure what your category is and you're just doing specific product research to try to get ideas of what products are selling well and what category you might wanna select, if you might not even have a page ready yet, or maybe you have your shop set up, but you haven't linked a TikTok affiliate page yet, then some of you might be in that overall product research stage, but the majority of you are already going to have a specific niche that you've identified. And so that's where you want to pick the category. So let's say, for example, we were doing beauty and personal care. You could pick a specific subsect of that. So if we were doing men's care or eye care, we'd pick one of those. So let's go to men's care as an example here. And now we can see within the United States in the men's care sub category under health within the last day, what are the top products that are selling? What are their commissions? What are their sales? What's their estimated revenue? And most importantly, in my opinion, what the sales trend of that specific product is, right? And the reason that that's important is because a product might have a lot of sales. It might have a great commission. It might have a good rating on it. And if you're sorting for all those things, that's great. But what if the product was selling a month ago and got the majority of its sales a month ago, and now it's super saturated and it's not really selling that well. So always look at the sales trend and make sure that the graph is still going up or it's at the very least steady. The last thing you wanna see is for it to be up, 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 and then have a drastic drop down and now it's not really selling well. That's a major red flag and something to avoid because either it's oversaturated now with a ton of people selling it because they figured out that it was a hot selling product. Maybe TikTok removed that product. I've seen that specific example before, or maybe Maybe demand for that product might have just died off if, for example, it was a seasonal product or something like that. Another example of a reason that you'd see that is if the main supplier of that product where everybody was getting it was out of stock and now you can't sell it. Again, another indicator there. So always look at the sales trend graph there. Now you could also filter it a little bit more if you wanted to go price. For example, if you've identified that the best prices are between 10 and maybe 40 bucks because it's more of a impulse buy and a lot better for something like TikTok shop then you could specifically sort it for those prices. If you wanna avoid the products under $10 that are super cheap because you don't wanna sell those, well, then maybe you wanna go 10 to 20 or 20 to 50 and set your specific filters there. For the sake of just showing you here, I'm not really gonna go too deep into a category, but we'll stick with, let's say, personal care appliances and we'll X out of the filter for price. We won't set any specific commission rate and we'll go weekly so we can see numbers for the past week and make sure that the sales trend hasn't really died off that much and it's still selling. So the first thing here is a water flosser. The price is $15.59. The commission is 15%. And the sales on TikTok for this specific product within the last week is $21,000, a little bit over, right? With a revenue of $331,000 and a sales trend that, while it does look like it's kind of spiking, we'd want to just extrapolate this out monthly to see if that sales trend has died within the past month or so. Or you can also just click on the product and make sure that way. So if we click on the product and we scroll down, and we extrapolate it out to 15 days or 30 days, we can see that it was doing well and then it kind of died off. And now it's still pretty consistent overall because again, we're really only seeing this last portion right here over, which makes it look like it's downtrending. But if we extrapolate it out, really in the beginning of April, it was still selling pretty well. And there was a lull there at the end of March, but it's kind of come back since then. Now within this product, we can see relevant videos on it as well, which is absolutely crucial. You can see the 
specific videos that other creators have made on this product that are selling this specific product and the sales, the views, the commission that they made. And that gives you the best data that you can understand that, okay, it's not just one video that potentially went viral that is driving all these sales. You ideally want to make sure that there's a bunch of videos that have gone viral because that would be a good indicator that you can also have a decent shot to do it as well. And most importantly, if you click on some of these videos, it then shows you the specific data on that video, why it was a good video or not. And obviously these are all going to be good videos. And you can even see the script and download the script if you just export it right here from Shop Plus or even download the video if you wanted to go that route. I don't usually do that. What I'll do is I'll download the script and then I'll either emulate and not copy for lack of a better word, but really take a lot of their initial hook because that's what worked and a lot of their call to action at the end and then kind of just put the script in my own words in the middle and make a new video. And I'll do this with usually five to 10 of the top videos and just kind of anecdotally see, all right, what hooks are working? Is there something similar about those hooks that's working well for everybody? Is there a specific video format that's working well for everybody? For example, is everybody showcasing this water flosser in front of the mirror in their bathroom? Are they maybe stress testing a specific product to make sure it doesn't break? Or whatever the case is, you'll start to see different trends working very similarly with almost all the videos. And that's when you obviously wanna emulate that because that's what's working. But it's gonna depend product to product. I just kinda wanna get you to start thinking about these things so that you can better use this data to make better videos. But let's go back and do one more really fast. So we'll go back to products and we'll go back to top sellers and we'll say we're in the US this time. We'll go kitchenware. We'll go barbecue, which is probably a good niche because it's getting nice out and people are starting to barbecue. We'll extrapolate this out weekly. We'll say, hey, we want to go, you know, I don't know, 20 to 50 this time. We'll make sure that the product rating is four to five stars and we'll see what pops up. Ideally, you want to sell the hottest products within your niche. Niche, right? So you don't want to go super, super niche down with all the specific filters. You want to start broad and start selling what's already working for a lot of people, at least in the beginning. But as you get better and better at making product videos and emulating what's working, you really then at that point do kind of want to niche down a little bit more with some of these filters because it's going to show you other products that a lot of other people doing product research are not then seeing. So for example, if we wanted to check out if this is a good product, which looks like it's kind of popping up at the end, same thing with this one right here. What we could do, well, within the past week, it's sold 55 times. Its revenue is 1.6 thousand, so it's not selling anything crazy. But for example, let's say like maybe this was selling a little bit better and we wanted to emulate and see if this was a good product. We would click on the product. We could see that its product rating is very good, so people are very happy with it. It won't hurt our TikTok shop if we promote this. You can also see how many relevant influencers are promoting this too. So how many people all together are responsible for all this revenue and all these sales? Well, it's five people within the past seven days. And this really isn't selling that well with only like a few hundred a day, six sales two days ago, six sales the day before, five the day before. So obviously this isn't a good product, but I just wanna show you how the data presents all this to you. And again, remember the most important thing here is the trend. So extrapolate it out to 30 days for that product and make sure that it's not dying off completely and sold a bunch, you know, in the beginning of the month, but now isn't really selling well because that could be an indicator of something wrong over Saturday saturation or a number of other things. Let's find one more good product so I can show you one more example of that. And obviously you can go new products, hot products, or breakout products up top if you wanted to. So we'll just pick a broad category. Let's go skincare this time and we'll go weekly and we'll scroll down a little bit just to see other opportunities. This one sold 27,000 in the past week. This one sold 35,000 in the past week. This one 18,000. And this one's kind of, let's check out this face serum right here. 32,000 in the past week. It looks like the trend is going up upward. There's 470 relevant videos. So it's not as populated as this one with a thousand. And obviously you can see the influencers here on the side, if you scroll over a little bit. So there's only 241 influencers promoting this or making videos on this product where this product is linked as opposed to 877, which obviously is a little bit more saturated, right? It's almost four times that much or three times almost. This one would even be better, right? Because there's less relevant videos and less relevant influencers. And this one right here would even be better because there's more revenue 
more sales, less relevant videos, and less relevant influencers, right? So more sales, less competition. And that's how you can really start to gauge these products and what's better and what's worse, right? If you scroll up, this one right here, yes, it has 56,000, which is more, but there's more relevant videos and more relevant influencers, right? So this one looks pretty solid. Let's make sure that the trend graph isn't something that spooks us. We'll just check it. We'll click the product. We'll extrapolate it again out 30 days. And see, this is exactly what I'm talking about right here. So while this looks great, all the sales pretty much happened recently and in the beginning of the month. So this is something that we'd probably want to avoid for whatever reason, there's an issue here. And while this product looked good initially, you don't want to make a video on this. It's probably going to waste your time. But if we were to click, let's say this one right here, the 392 with 244, and we check the past 30 days, this one is much more consistent. As you can see, it's been selling well for pretty much the entire month of April. So this would probably be a better product to target. Again, not that many influencers creating videos, not that many relevant videos. And you can even check into relevant videos and then do your own research and click all these specific videos to see how are they presenting the product? What's their specific hook? What's their call to action? And why are these videos working? Is there something very similar about all of them that you can then take, add to your video and make it better? And again, the coolest thing about this is you can just export the script from right here. This software is a game changer for anybody selling on TikTok shop or trying to find hot products for TikTok affiliates. If you're not using a product research software like this, you are really handicapping yourself. And I don't know why you wouldn't. Again, completely free trial for seven days. First link in the description, or you can just go to shopplus.net products with proven sales records and replicating successful formats. You drastically increase the likelihood that your TikTok product video might go viral. While this approach may not guarantee instant success, of course, it does provide a structured proven framework for creating compelling product videos that resonate better with TikTok's audience. And now we're not guessing anymore. We're using proven data, selling proven products and emulating proven formats that we know are actually working.